You hear the screeching of an owl You hear the wind begin to howl You know there's zombies on the prowl And it's terror time again They've got you running through the night It's terror time again And you just might die of fright It's a terrifying time Better. I need a medic over here! Oh, shit! He's been eaten? Well, it's time to apply that basic training knowledge and put it to good use. Today, on the Beginner's Guide, we're going to be taking a look at first aid and covering everything that is related to the skill. One last thing before we start the video, I'd like to give a shout out to Kato Phoenix. She did a lovely job on the artwork. Be sure to check her out down below in the description. Now let's start, shall we? First aid has a variety of professions and traits that affect the skill. First is Nurse. This provides two levels of first aid as well as one level of light footed. Likely due to the fact that nurses are used to running around in a hurry I suppose. As well as providing two bonus points towards a trait of your choice. The other profession is Doctor and is arguably my preferred choice. This one provides three levels of first aid and a level of short blade, making you more effective at the healing and the healing. Now there is also a variety of traits that affect first aid in various ways. Let's start with first aider, which provides a flat one first aid skill and it only costs four points, while former scout provides a level of first aid and a level of forging at the cost of six points. There are several traits that also affect how you handle first aid. Let us start with hemophilia shall we? When you have hemophobia, your character will panic like mad when you're bleeding, as well as if you get covered in blood, that'll raise your anxiety levels. And it also comes with the downside you cannot provide first aid for any other player as well. The next two traits directly affect healing rates. Slow healer and fast healer affect health how you'd expect. Your wounds will recover at a rate of 20% slower or faster respectively. Prone to illness is a dangerous wild card. It triples your chance of infection from injuries and hastens how quickly you turn into a zombie. Weak stomach increases your likelihood of developing foodborne illnesses by around 100%. Thin and thick skin increase or decrease the likelihood of a bite or scratch managing to break the surface and attempting to infect you with the zombie virus. Being underweight or very underweight can also increase your likelihood of injury. One thing is certain with all of these traits, however. They will all change how you have to handle your injuries and illnesses. There is a wide variety of injuries within Zomboid, from a small scrape to a moderate laceration all the way up to the dreaded bite, and each of them requires a specific form of treatment to tend to. Now let's break down every injury and what one does to tend to the wound, shall we? First up shall be the most common, that being scratching. This can occur in a variety of ways. Maybe a zombie got a bit too close and got a lucky scratch in. Maybe you were running barefoot or naked in the wood lines. Maybe you decided to dig up the dirt to plant seeds by hand. No matter what you've done, you've scraped up your body and now it needs to be tended. Scratches from a zombie specifically have a low chance of infection, but just enough to keep you on your toes. Keep in mind that even if you don't get the zombie virus, an untreated zombie scratch can still give you a regular infection. For every other kind of scratch, there's no zombie infection chance. Now to treat a scratch, you're gonna need some disinfectant and a bandage. This being the simplest wound, it's also fairly easy to treat. Wipe it down with some alcohol of any kind or some disinfecting wipes, whatever you can get your hand on. Once you've done that, you're gonna need to prepare a bandage. Now that you've gotten the wound patched up, just keep pulling the bandages off when they get dirty, apply a clean one, and clean the old one if you can. The bleeding is also slow, but certain body parts like the neck bleed faster. Think a more severe scratch, which also carries a heightened chance of infection and bleeds more quickly, especially noticeable on the neck. Laceration needs to be treated quickly if you fancy living. 
can be incurred in many of the same ways as a scratch, including, say, climbing through broken glass. This injury will also stick with your character for longer than a scratch wheel, taking longer to heal. I've gotten quite unlucky on many occasions while sprinting through the trees and having them slit my throat. This is the game over, man! Game over injury! If you get bit, you might as well ride a wheel, guzzle down some alcohol, and put the barrel of your trusty shotgun in your mouth. Because your character is toast, and while no one truly knows if it's 100% deadly, it's high enough that it might as well be. If bitten, you've only got one option. Find a place to secure your valuables and stash them quickly, then kill yourself or trap yourself so you're stuck when you turn and then start a new character on that world to go recover the loot. If you don't start just a new world like I do. Also, for some reason, I have a very high propensity towards getting bit on the groin for some reason. And I did not consent to that sort of head, I'll tell you that much. Broken bones, primarily incurred due to falling from heights, or car wrecks, or hitting terrain at high speeds, or if you're playing multiplayer, getting beaten around with blunt weapons. These can all incur fractures. To treat a fracture, you require a splint. Fractures tend to have a fairly lengthy recovery time and will slow you dramatically or make your combat much less effective depending on where the fracture is incurred. If you're capable of it, it's recommended you hunker down for a while and take some time to recover your wounds as long as you've got the resources to spare. So you caught yourself on fire. Well, you're in for a slow burn recovery. First, you're gonna have to take a clean bandage and use it to clean the wound itself, then apply another bandage to the wound. After that, you're gonna have to regularly make sure the wound is kept clean. This wound is one of the ones that sticks around the longest. Deep wounds tend to be one of the most dangerous injuries to incur outside of a bite. These could be caused by breaking windows barehanded, applying to both houses or cars, climbing through the windows without removing the shards first, falling from high heights, getting nailed by a car, or God forbid Bethesda itself, I mean terrain, or if some madman with an axe comes at you and manages to slice you without killing you. This wound requires either a suture needle or a needle and thread to sew back together, and letting it take time to heal. Shards of glass get lodged in your ass when you climb through a window without removing the pieces with a tool first, or you smash said window without a tool, or you walk over glass barefoot. You need a pair of tweezers to remove the pieces and then bandage them. Be careful that while you can bandage over the glass to stop the bleeding, this will amplify the pain your character's feeling, so they become even less effective at fighting. Gunshots currently only happen in multiplayer due to there being zero NPCs. If you get shot in multiplayer, however, there is a chance for the bullet to be lodged in your body. If this happens, you're gonna need a variety of tools to fix this fuck up. Take your tweezers and pull out the bullet. Once you've done this, now it's time to disinfect the wound because infection will kill you if you aren't careful. Once you've cleaned the wound, now it's time to stitch the wound back together and then finally bandage it back up. Pain comes from a variety of sources, from working out too intensely, to being injured, to carrying far too much loot than you should in one trip. Pain can cause a lot of trouble for you, ranging from inconveniencing you with the fact you can't sleep if you're in too much pain, to making you less accurate and forceful with your weapon swings. Now this can be treated in a variety of ways, however. If you can't sleep, then sleeping tablets will drop your tiredness and let you ignore the pain modifier. Painkillers are the go-to method for reducing the pain, and black sage, which can be forged from the woods, can also provide some mild pain relief if you can't find any pills to pop. Now let's discuss illnesses. Illnesses come from a variety of sources within Zomboid. Eating rotten food or poisonous berries and mushrooms can cause food poisoning, which in high enough doses can cause death. Being exposed to the elements for too long can also incur illness, as well as injuries incurred from combat if you don't treat them quick enough. Or if you're unlucky and become infected by the zombie virus. 
Sickness can produce a variety of symptoms, including a general queasy feeling, nausea once it progresses further, which reduces your strength and ability to heal. Next, you progress to the sick phase, which further reduces your strength and healing ability. And finally, fever. Once fever sets in, the only hope to combat is being well fed, getting plenty of rest. If you don't do this, odds are you're going to die. Keep in mind that these symptoms apply to every infection, including zombification. Now, antibiotics will reduce the strength of the illness, letting you recover sooner except for in a zombie infection. That's a goner. The only illness that isn't outright deadly is anxiety. That only makes you wish you were dead. Anxiety comes with its own variety of fun and scary symptoms, and it can also develop alongside the other illnesses, or as a result of not smoking if you have the addiction, or if your boredom spirals into depression. Wounds can become infected from most of the injuries you can incur if not disinfected. If treated quickly, even after the wound itself is infected, you can nip it in the bud before it spreads. If it spreads, however, you'll start to display the symptoms of illness, and barring zombification, it's up to you and how you handle it, if it'll be fatal or not. Here's where we will break down all the treatment methods within the game that you'll need to know if you want to not die a gruesome death. First up, let's talk about tools of the trade. And for that, we will start with bandaging. Bandaging is done with a variety of materials. You've got adhesive bandages. These are little band-aids you stick over a wound. Fairly common, but they're one use only. Your next tool is going to be the ripped sheet. These are made from ripped apart clothing, curtains, sheets, and towels. Not exactly the highest quality material, but it will stop the bleeding. Keep in mind that these get dirty quick and require being replaced often. The preferred item of choice is the bandage, the sort that you'd see in a first aid kit or in a hospital. Wrap it around the wound and hope the bleeding stops soon. These require the least replacement and when they do need to be replaced, they can be taken off, cleaned, and reused. Bandages can also be used to sterilize burns when necessary. Your next tool is going to be disinfected. This comes in a variety of forms, from bottles of bourbon looted from the bar, a bottle of rubbing alcohol or a cotton ball covered in said rubbing alcohol, or an alcohol wipe. This is an essential step in stopping wounds from developing infections that can become fatal untreated. Disinfected can also sterilize a bandage, making it more potent for healing. Bandages can also be sterilized using a pot of water and a heat source such as an oven if need be. Now let's talk sutures. This is one of the less common tools to use. You only need this to heal deep wounds which are uncommon, or gunshots which are even less common unless you play a PvP focused server. There are two ways you can suture an injury. You can either find a suture needle, which is more effective and causes less pain, or you can use a needle and thread, which is more common as thread can be found on its own in sewing kits or from ripping apart clothing and needles which are fairly common in hardware areas. Splints are only used for treatment treating bone fractures, made with a bandage and a piece of wood. This being a plank, a sturdy stick, or a tree branch, and bam, you got a splint. Tweezers are another niche tool, only really used to remove broken glass, which can be an easy injury to get if you aren't careful, or gunshots, which aren't exactly common. And the last tool is the tissue. Really, the only use of this is to muffle your sneezes while you have a cold and are sneezing. Now let's cover medication. Medication comes in a large variety of tasty candies to shove into your body. Let's talk painkillers first. Vicodin, hydrocodone, oxycodone, whatever it is in the game, it does the good shit. It stops the pain from your injuries, letting you fight a little more effectively, or maybe just get a little shut-eye without it ravaging your body. Sleeping tablets, which have been the death of many a rocker, will let you get a little shut-eye if you're not tired enough, or if the pain's just too severe for you to sleep otherwise, or your anxiety has skyrocketed. The other method to treating anxiety is smoking. Smoking will take the edge off whenever your stress climbs too high. Vitamins will help push away your character's exhaustion, if only at a little bit of a time. Beta blockers will calm a character and help keep them from freaking out so much it's swinging erratically. Antidepressants will help push that unhappiness back and keep the beast within your head from gaining ground. Antibiotics will help to treat illnesses that aren't zombification or mental and are helpful in fighting infection and colds. 
The next method to treating mental issues is literature. Keep a good pile of books, newspapers, and magazines on hand, as well as comic books or even porn mags, and you'll help take the edge off. There's also a variety of herbal remedies that can be accessed within Zomboid, either via the Herbalist trait or by reading the Herbalist skill magazine. Once you have this knowledge, you can forge the woods for a variety of herbs to treat issues. Your most common tool from this arsenal is going to be the poultice, which comes in three varieties. A comfrey poultice, which is made using a pestle and mortar, and that applies to the other poultice as well, and five comfrey will allow you to recover from broken bones faster when applied to a wound. A plantain poultice is made the same way, but with plantain, and will aid wound recovery speed. And finally is the wild garlic poultice. This poultice reduces infection chance of whatever wound it's applied to. There's also a few other herbs that have different beneficial effects. Black sage acts as a mild painkiller. Ginseng acts as a small energy buff and will help you fight exertion. Eating common mallow will aid you in fighting off cold and flu symptoms. Lemongrass will ease food poisoning much in the same way. Ah, the old American way of solving your problems. You want the pain to go away? You need a quick burst of healing in a desperate situation? Then just wolf down an insane amount of food. Once you get nicely stuffed with food, you'll heal at an increased rate. It can even keep you alive longer while fighting off zombification. You can use food to fight unhappiness and boredom as well. So if you can't afford to suffer from an injury for long, or you just got the spare resources, then chow down. That just about covers first aid in its entirety, and damn was it a long video. But hey, now you should have a good knowledge of what to do whenever you get hurt in any way. Now get out there and duct tape your leg back on. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please be sure to support the content. This has been Core, and I'll see you next time.